Welcome back. We continue live right here. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock. Call me on my radio show tomorrow on 93.7 The Fan, 11 to 1 a.m. or 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., I should say. Uh, give me a shout. We have a lot to get into as well. Uh, Ron, Spartan Ron on Twitter. Thank you very much, Ron. He tweeted me that the attendance tonight over at PPG Paints Arena was 10,000. 118, which was a good crowd considering how these two teams kind of rebuilding programs with a lot of freshmen. And in fact, Duquesne has five, I think it's five Division I transfers who weren't even available and won't be until next season. So um, good game, competitive for most part, but pulls away at the end and they win 76 64. Now, the pirate news of the day, and before I get to the lines, we'll tell you about that. It's not really news because it's more protocol than anything else, but they had to offer guys who were arbitration eligible deals, and they did offer Jared Cole to Jordy Mercer to George Contos and Felipe Rivero. All those guys will go to arbitration, and all those guys are going to make a lot more money uh, probably than the pirates want to pay, which leaves us to the free agent Otani, the international guy from Japan who's everyone wants. Uh, you know, quite honestly, even though the salary is something the Pirates could afford, they're not going to pay anyone $20 million for the rights to get the guy. I just don't see that happening. So if you want to call and talk about that, you can, but it's very unlikely that that would occur based on what we've seen here with spending habits over the years. But it's a guy who can play the field, he can pitch, he has a 102-mile-an-hour fastball at clocked, uh, and he can do just about everything, and that's why everybody wants him. The interesting thing is where Giancarlo Stanton will end up, because right now the Giants seem to be, and they should, the Giants were awful last year off, uh, offensively. They just couldn't do anything. They need a big catch. Quite frankly, if you look at, at the numbers, Stanton does most of his best hitting, at least home run-wise, in that division, including where the Giants play, which is not necessarily one of the easier places, and Petco isn't either, but he has some tremendous numbers in terms of long ball at and you get Arizona and Colorado how many times a year, too. So, very interesting stuff. Let's go out to Big Will in Monroeville. Who kicks us off tonight. What's up, Big Will? How you doing? Hey, Bob. How are you this evening? Good. Thanks. Good. Oh, no. Hey, listen, uh, I wanted to talk uh, Pirate Baseball with you. Mm -hmm. And with the upcoming winter meetings, and I wanted to talk to Andrew McCutcheon. Uh, do you think that there's a possibility with uh, us needing – Several, several positions like second, third, and possibly another starter. Do you think we can catch that with McCutcheon? As far as a trade, and yeah, I think yeah. you know he's going to be, he'll be traded at some point. I've said that ever since he signed his fifty-one million dollar deal. I didn't think it was ever mm -hmm. going to get to the point where they'd give him another one. Uh, it was a good deal for the team, no doubt. It was a, at the time a good deal for Andrew because he's going to get all the guaranteed money, but he's clearly outplayed it. So uh, it's just a matter mm -hmm. of when. Uh, last year, they thought they had something close with Washington. I wouldn't be surprised again if the Nationals stepped up. You know, we heard that the Giants may be interested. They have sure. needs, no doubt. And I'm just curious, because you have a guy on an expiring contract, what that would mean. Because typically, if he has two years, three years left on it, you trade him, you're going to get far more. Because there's you, that club knows they have him. Now it's kind of, okay, he can go to free agency. You're not necessarily guaranteed of that unless they strike a deal before so. Uh, so I would expect they should be able to get something. I don't know about serving all three of those things, though. Okay, well, I appreciate it, Bob. All right, thanks, Well, Appreciate your call, as always. Let's go out to Anthony and Denora. Anthony, how are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? Fine, thanks. Hey, yeah, I just wanted to see uh, if tonight's game was any, <clears throat> any indication on how the rest of the season is going to play out. Uh, how do you feel about our chances of getting a three-peat this year? Well, I thought they were good all the way through. I mean, Tampa Bay, to me, is the team that you have to really watch out for in the Eastern Conference. They're really good. They, they could beat the Penguins at their own game, which is speed. Uh, they, they've got a tremendous you know, top line, one that can score a variety of ways. Uh, they're very similar to the Penguins in many ways, although I think the Penguins have the experience part of that on their side. Um, and I do believe that uh, you know, in the end, the Penguins are going to be right there. I'm not sure if they'll win their division, uh, the Metropolitan. They don't have to. They've proven that. But at some point, you know, they're going to go on a roll, and this may be it. They have five straight home games coming up beginning tomorrow night with the return match of the Buffalo Sabres and then all the way through next week and the following Monday. Uh, so they can uh, take advantage of that, move ahead a little bit. Uh, but in the end, they're going to be in the playoffs just no matter what the matchups will be. It's typically matchups. Uh, I would think that Tampa is going to be the team that will get the number one seed in the conference based on everything we've seen so far. Columbus is a team that you've got to watch out for, the way they play. I think Washington still, you know, they, they believe they're a team that can win a conference or win, but they haven't proven it. If they do, they're going to be doubters. 
Uh, Toronto's young. Are they ready? Who knows? They might be by the end of the year. They got some great young talent on that team. So there's a long way to go, but I think the Penguins will be certainly in the mix, and that's all you really want to hear. Let's go to Howie and Beaver. What's up, Howie? How are you? Okay, how, how are you, Bob? All right, what's up? Uh, why do they always have to have the playoffs in Hershey? I don't know. I wish they could split that up all over the, all over the state, really. They should be able to. Yeah, because it makes it difficult for people who, you know, you've got to commit a lot of time and effort, drive time to get there. Right. Uh, and you have to stay overnight in some cases, and oh, yes, it's an expense. Oh, drive. Right. So the best thing to do would be moving around. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Howie. Uh, let's go to Jim in Pittsburgh. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Jim, you're I on the smell, air. Go ahead. I smell litter. John in Green Street. Hey, John. Hey, thanks for taking my call, guy. How you doing, man? How you doing? What's up, John? Hey, what's up, man? Uh, do you think the Stewarts can beat the Bengals Monday in Cincinnati? Um, how do you like our chances in Cincinnati on Monday? Thank you. All right. You know, at the beginning of the season, John, I had this as one of my losses in a 13-3 and season. I'm going to stick to that probably. Uh, I think Cincinnati's a tough team to play there. They'll be desperate. Uh, they have a quarterback who can get the ball down the field. And until the uh, Steelers solve some of their down-the-field problems, I think this is going to be a tough game for them. So I would expect them to lose that game. I also expect them to beat New England, too. So I think it may come down to the New England game because then you may end up with the identical record as New England, but that head-to-head -head will get them as the number one seed. That's kind of how I had it planned out at the beginning of the year. We'll see if it holds out that way. Let's go back to the lines on the Bordis and Bordis outline. We're going to Polish Hill this time. We got Rich. Rich, what's up? Oh, my man, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Why do you even talk about Tiger Woods? Golf isn't a sport. It's a learned skill. You don't run, jump, or throw. Good night. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's what you get when you watch the nightly sports call. On that note, we'll take a break. It's 412-575-2600. Tiger Woods, since you brought it up. Tiger Woods is in fourth place. And the thing about him, he's very important to golf, even if he doesn't win. He's important to be on the leaderboard. He draws. He moves the needle, as they say. So you may not think it's worth watching. A lot of people do. And it's better when he's around. We'll be back after this on the Nightly Sports Show.